Hello, fourth graders, and welcome back. I am Mrs. Lomando here to bring you our Fontis and Pinnell mini lesson of the day. Today, we are going to combine two mini lessons into one as we continue our uh, umbrella of lessons all about poetry. So today, we're starting with LA U7 lesson three. Today, we're going to explore a fun kind of poem, a limerick. A limerick is a rhyming poem that is usually surprising, funny, and nonsensical. Let's listen and see what differences you notice from other poems we've read. In this, In this video, video, we are, we are going, going to, to learn, learn about, about limericks, limericks and, and warning. warning. This, this is, is going to be fun and this is going to be silly because limericks are both fun and silly. But first, what is a limerick? That's a good question. Well, a limerick is a type of poem, a very special type of poem. Limericks are usually very silly poems that are fun to read and to write. Let's look at some other things that makes a limerick a limerick. A limerick is a type of poetry that always has five lines. So, if a poem has more than five lines or less than five lines, you know it's not a limerick because a limerick always has five lines. Alright, so let's review. Limericks. Limericks are a type of poetry. Limericks have five lines and limericks are often silly. That's not all, though. You see, limericks have a specific pattern. Just because a poem has five lines and sounds silly does not make it a limerick. Limericks have to follow a very special pattern. It's really awesome. Limericks have a rhyming pattern. That's right, a rhyming pattern. Remember, words rhyme when they end with the same sound. So let's look at this specific rhyming pattern that all limericks have. The first line, the second line, and the fifth line all rhyme. That means those lines end with the same sound. Then the third and fourth lines rhyme with a different sound than the other lines. So the first line, second line, and fifth line all rhyme. And the third line and the fourth line have their very own rhyme. So it's almost like a rhyme sandwich, you know? <laughs> Let's look at an example. Let's look at a very old limerick about a mouse. Here it is. You might recognize it. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one and down he run hickory dickory dock. Notice this follows the pattern of the limericks, doesn't it? The first, second, and fifth lines rhyme, and the third and fourth lines rhyme. It's a rhyming sandwich. It's a five-line poem, and it's a little silly. This is a limerick. Limericks weren't really popular until this guy came around. His name was Edward Lear, and he is called the father of limericks. In 1846, Edward Lear published this book, a book called A Book of Nonsense. What an interesting title. It was a book filled with limericks and helped make limericks more popular. People loved reading his limericks. They were incredibly fun and, of course, very silly. Let's look at one of his limericks, a limerick about a bee written by the father of limericks, Edward Lear. It goes like this. There was an old man in a tree who was horribly bored by a bee. 
When they said, does it buzz, he replied, yes it does. It's a regular brood of a bee. Notice how it has five lines. The first, second, and fifth lines rhyme, and the third and fourth lines rhyme, making a rhyming sandwich, which is the pattern of a limerick. And it is definitely silly. This is a limerick written by Edward Lear, the father of limericks. To review, limericks are a type of poetry. They have five lines and they are often silly. They also follow a specific pattern. The pattern they follow is a rhyming pattern. The first, second, and fifth lines all rhyme and the third and fourth lines rhyme, making a rhyming sandwich. That's the structure and pattern of a limerick. Oh, this is such a heavy cart. It's so difficult pushing this. It's stuck right in front of the school. What if the students see me with this? Okay, I gotta keep pushing. Gotta keep pushing this. I'm glad. All right, so as we saw, a limerick is a really fun type of poem that's a little bit different than the other poems we've seen so far. As we heard, there's only five lines and there's certain lines that have to rhyme. Limericks usually have rhyming words, five lines. Lines one, two, and five rhyme and have the same rhythm. Lines three and four have the same rhythm. They're funny and they don't always have to make sense. Let's continue with another type of poetry that may be new to you. This is LA U7 Lesson 4. Today we're going to learn about another special type of poem called a haiku. Let's check out this video and see what makes a haiku different than a limerick or other poems we've read. Hi everyone. So we are going to learn another new poem today and it's called a haiku poem. Now I like it because it's just a funky name anyway. Now a haiku poem is all about syllables. So syllables are different to phonics and phonemes. It's how we chunk words up. For example, dog or cup cake or turtle alligator. Now haiku poems are very short and they're only three lines. Now the reason we need to know about syllables is because there are going to be five syllables in the first line, seven in the second, and five again in the third. So there's only three lines, but you really have to think about and count out how many syllables before you write your line. So remember, first line, how many are there? Five. Second line, seven. Third line, five. Now today we're going to create a Who Am I poem. So this is going to be about an animal. I want you to give me some clues about your animal, but don't tell me what it is. And I'm going to have to guess with your haiku poem. So you might want to include some characteristics, its habitat, where it lives, what it eats, if it hibernates, migrates, any details you want. I'm going to give you an example. Now, before you write each sentence, you are going to have to either clap out or count out the syllables. If you have too many, you need to make it a shorter sentence. If you don't have enough, you're going to need to make it a longer sentence. Remember, five in the first line, seven in the second, five in the third. I'm going to give you an example of a haiku poem, What Am I? And I want you to have a guess. Okay, are you ready? Now the first line. Green and speckled legs. Can you see how those five syllables? Should we clap it out? Green and speckled legs. Ooh, that was my first line. My next line. Hops on logs and lily pads. Should we do that again? Hops on logs and lily pads. That was seven. Okay, my last 
sentence. How many syllables does there need to be? Five. Okay. Splash in cool water. Let's tap it out. Splash in cool water. Hmm. Do you have any ideas of what my animal is? That's right, it's a frog. Great. Should we have... So, we can see there how a limerick, I'm sorry, how a haiku is very different than a limerick and also different than other poems that we've read so far. So a haiku is an ancient Japanese form of non-rhyming poetry, so no rhymes, that creates a picture and often conveys emotion. Haikus are short, have no rhyme or rhythm. They're usually about something in nature, like we just heard that one about the frog. It creates a picture in your mind. There's five syllables in the first and last lines and seven syllables in the middle. If you want to try out writing some limericks or haikus, we would love to hear them. All right, fourth graders, that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Bye.